Hey, welcome back, everyone. Welcome, loyal subscribers, and welcome, new subscribers. Thanks so much for tuning in here today. Well, today we're going to be talking about how you escape a severe narcissist. You don't leave them. Now, the reason I say that is because so many times people have uh, suggested that it's easy for a target to leave a situation with a narcissist, whether they're married or on their own and involved with one of these types, whether it's a family member or whether it's a job situation. Narcissists will be in all parts of your life. And these severe narcissists, as I said, are life altering and extremely abusive. They will wreak havoc on your health, on your mental health, especially, and uh, also your physical health. And they take up years of your life. They cause great losses in people's life. And the bond, the trauma bond with this type of abuse is like no other. As I said, it's not easy to break and just leave or walk away. Now, if you have friends or family members uh, that are saying, why don't you just leave? Or I would never tolerate that behavior. I'm different. Well, great for them, but that tells me and will tell you that they obviously are naive and they don't understand uh, narcissism nor the type of severe abuse that you have endured and survived. So I would not really deal with those types of so-called friends or family members. Um, they obviously will re-abuse you if you go to them looking for any type of empathy or compassion, uh, they think it's easy to leave. And I'm telling you, it's not easy to leave. And you don't even leave. You have to escape a narcissist, okay? There's a difference. You escape and survive a narcissist. You don't just decide to leave and walk away casually. Now, the lucky ones here and I'm sorry to say lucky, you've encountered a severe demonic entity. But if you are not being hoovered by your severe narcissist, count it a blessing, guys. Because if you have gone no contact from a severe narcissist and you've induced narcissistic injury in that narcissist, as you know, they can't hear the word no. They don't allow someone to walk away if you're the one that walked away from the narcissist. They will harass, they will stalk, they will put trackers on your car sometimes. I've heard of that several times. They've, you know, if they pay for your cell phone, they're watching the phone bill and everybody you're calling and um, they can find out where you're at that way. They can have their flying monkeys and minions uh, be third parties to um, track you down and find information about you. You're never really safe you know, when you have to escape, again, a severe narcissist. So those of you that are told it's easy and you get criticized, they, you know, these people that tell you that should not judge. I do not judge anyone's situation. You all have a different situation. And I know how difficult it is. I know the challenges. A lot of you have children. A lot of you have already suffered losses prior to meeting this narcissist and you're worn out. It's not that easy. And the narcissist wears you out physically and mentally to the point where you're just trying to hold your head up every day or keep it above water and prevent yourself from drowning, right? It's, it's not an easy thing to endure daily, let alone uh, plan your escape. But I'm telling you, you can uh, if you really want to. And I'm not saying that you don't want to, but you can find strength, and the strength is with the Lord. That's, I say that from firsthand knowledge with myself and cases of so many others that really turn their life over to the Lord, turn the situation with their narcissist over to the Lord. Uh, but you have to be willing to give up some things. You have to be willing to be on your own. Perhaps you have been the, with the narcissist for several decades. Perhaps you married them young. Perhaps you have went from your family to the narcissist and you've never been on your own. But think about this. The Lord always isolated people in the Bible to train them and, and for protection. 
Think about that. You know, and he provided for them. He fed them with ravens. You know, he kept them isolated so they would not be killed in many instances. So know that if you decide to escape, not leave, but escape your narcissist, that the Lord will help you. The Lord will protect you if you are walking with him, if you're spending time with him, if you turn the situation over to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm going to trust you now instead of man. I'm going to trust you now in, instead of this male or female narcissist. I'm going to trust you now instead of my narcissistic family member. I'm going to listen to you, Lord. I'm going to listen to you and your guidance through the Holy Spirit. And my life is yours. I turn it over to you. Once somebody does that and they mean it and they get rid of anything in their life that the Lord would not approve of, you know, many times these narcissists lead us to sin or they make excuses why sin is justified. You know, again, in the end days, evil will be seen as good and good is seen as evil. And the narcissist is great for that. Always seeing their evil as good, right? Well, isn't that a sign that they're not of God? But you have to get rid of any evil that uh, was associated with the narcissist and really have nothing to do with it. It says in 2 Timothy, have nothing to do with these types, right? So if you have defined that your narcissist has been deceptive, is pulling you into sin, you have justifiable reason to disassociate yourself from that. It says have nothing to do with these types. But it is not an easy walk or journey. You know, you have to spend time alone. And one word of advice is, you know, if you are in a situation that you need to escape with a narcissist, try to put something away. A lot of you, I know finances are hard or you have kids and it's scary. You know, the narcissist many times isolates you away from your support system, has you quit your job, or it's impossible with kids to work, and you are dependent on them. That's what they want. They want you to be totally self-reliant on them, so you worship them and do what they say, etc. It's, it's coercive control, which is a crime in other countries, but in the United States, it still isn't. I wish it would be. But um, for now, you know, you really have to practice self-protection and try to, you know, ask the Lord's guidance. But self-protective measures help, like trying to put aside a dollar or five dollars, even if it's once a week or, you know, once a month, whatever it is. As time goes by, you'll feel a little better that you have something in case of an emergency or something in case you have to run out of the place without warning and that has happened, guys. You know, it seems like that won't, but, you know, you never really know what the narcissist is going to do. They've already proven themselves uh, deceptive and unreliable. So a lot of times targets have had to leave with the shirt on their back. And, you know, like I said, saving a little bit helps to prepare for that. So you, you'll feel a little more empowered. Also, uh, make sure that you don't go from the flame to the fire which is what the adversary wants you to do. It's all about flames with the devil, you know. Go to the, f what do I mean by the flame to the fire? Well, you know, the adversary is very shrewd and deceptive and of course it comes as a being a light. So while you're going through this with your severe narcissist and you're trying to escape, uh, the adversary sometimes sends people like, hey, I'll help or, you know, I've got a job for you or it seems like a, oh, a person that cares about you or a new relationship or something to dive into. Just beware. Just beware, guys. It could be a far worse situation and that person could be sent by the adversary. So in my opinion, guys, and my experience and the experience of a lot of other people, it's best to be on your own. It's not easy to do. I understand it takes finances. It takes planning. That's why I say it's an escape from a narcissist. It's never just walking away. <laughs> uh, and you have to use self-protective measures. Okay. You have to be street smart about it. You're dealing with the adversary. You're not dealing with, 
you know, somebody of God here. So you have to be very stealth-like in the sense that you can't divulge your plans, uh, try to save money without anybody knowing, like I said, even a dollar, five dollars, and um, don't dive into a situation where you feel someone else has to save you. Now, if it's somebody you've known for a long, long time, and you know they're not a narcissist, and they may want to help financially or or something, um, that's up to you whether you, f- you feel that they are trustworthy. But if anybody comes along new or somebody you really don't know or you haven't cohabitated with or somebody that um, is promising the world, just know that could be the love bombing all over again. And it could be the adversary trying to trap you in something that's far worse. So the best case scenario would be if you can uh, possibly spend time on your own. And if you are still with your narcissist, try to go for a walk on your own or spend time when they're away, just you and God. Turn it over to the Lord. Say, Lord, I can't do this alone. I need your help. And he will come through. He will come through in ways you can't imagine. And if you put him first and not the narcissist, because remember, you're going to spend eternity with the Lord. And the way the narcissist is going, I don't think it's going to be with them, right? So if we're to spend our eternity with the Lord, he's looking for us to change our life, get rid of anything evil in our life, anything that could open demonic portals, get rid of it. Uh, Anything that the narcissist classified as good for you, but you know it was against God's laws, don't participate in it. Don't drink the Kool-Aid, you know, get rid of it. Start living for the Lord. Be in the Word. As I said, the Word is the best defense against the adversary. I received that in several prophetic words that we are to know thy words written. And I'm still learning. Believe me, I am not a biblical scholar, but I try. And the Lord is educating me. And, um, you know, during self-isolation or times with the Lord, he's training you. He's training you. And you can't be deemed worthy of service to the Lord unless you know his word and you spend time with him. And so we must be pure in our heart, in our life, and spend time with him and know the word. And that's very, very hard to do with a narcissist. And we certainly can't help others and fulfill our calling if all we're doing is worried about being worried about what the narcissist is doing next to us and how are we going to survive another day with the narcissist's torment and trauma and ruminating with the trauma bond. The Lord will remove that trauma bond. You know, if you seek him out, put it in his hands and purify yourself. And that takes time alone, guys. I hate to tell you there's an easy, if there's an easier way, but there isn't. Everybody that the Lord has used in the Bible has been caved or isolated. I mean, look at John on the island for crying out loud. Look at all the prophets that were ordered to be killed. Here I am. I get prophetic words, (laughs) you know. And yes, the Jezebel spirit was after me. And I'm sure is after a lot of you who have prophetic callings and and work to do for the Lord. So it's a self-protective measure to self-isolate sometimes and to educate yourself and let the Lord do his his uh, sanctification work in you and purification work in you. Let him educate you through the Holy Spirit and grow closer to him. And then you get stronger, guys. But you cannot heal in the environment where you're abused. You can't uh, find the time to spend with the Lord while you're going through all that abuse. And um, you may have to give up a lot of things, guys. I'm not going to candy coat it. But it's so worth it. It's not worth it. It's not whatever worth whatever you have if you have a roof over your head or a certain type of lifestyle. It's not worth your soul. It's not worth you um, stifling your gifts and talents that the Lord has given you. It's not worth uh, you being led to sin on a daily basis and having the adversary take over your mind as well and losing your eternity. Not worth it, guys. 
The Lord will provide for you in ways you can't even imagine if you just turn it over to the Lord and spend time alone and try not to jump into the arms or an opportunity that's propped up by perhaps another narcissist that, you know, the adversary is using to keep you entrapped. Pray for the gift of discernment to really know who is of God and who isn't. So I hope this was helpful, guys. And just know you don't leave a narcissist. You escape a narcissist. And for those of you who have, you know, you are a warrior. It takes a lot of strength and courage. And anybody that thinks it's easy has no knowledge of the types that we're talking about here. They actually get energized by hurting you. And if that isn't from the adversary, guys, nothing is. Watch my Energized Evil video about that if you haven't already. It describes how they get empowered, and that's by hurting other people. There's no love in them. There's no truth in them, as it says in the Bible. The devil doesn't have an ounce of truth in him. Well, the narcissist doesn't either. So if you look at all of those signs of who you are actually dealing with, you'll see that in the Word. So I hope this was helpful, guys. And please tell me what you think in the comments. You know, let me know if you have gone no contact or if you had to escape rather than walk away. Always interested in hearing your situations. And just know the Lord will provide. I guarantee that. So rumble on rumble, guys. Follow on Facebook. And if anybody would like one-on-one -on -one Christian guidance, please email me at angelhavenministry at gmail.com. And I'll be sure to write you back with that information. So God bless, and I'll be back soon with another video. Take care.